level of self-growth. So Sakina, I'll let you introduce yourself and then um, we can go into the discussion. Hi everyone, I'm Sakina Issa. I'm based in Florida. Florida. Um, I am a psychotherapist um, and I primarily work with adolescents and young adults um, and I focus on marriage and family because I really truly really believe that the people we are today are is because we experience things as we grow, grew up through our families and through our relationships currently and so those are the things that we need to look at um, in order to create that change. Love that. Um, okay, so sort of going straight into the topic, let's um, let's go into sort of the description of um, maybe how you would define what self growth is. So self growth. So self growth is to me, it's just allowing yourself to broaden your horizons. It's allowing yourself to be able to look at you know, yourself in the mirror and say, there are part of, parts of me that I don't agree with, that I don't like, that I would like to change. You know, when we think of growth, sometimes we think of like our physical appearance, like, oh, you know, I want better abs or, you know, I want blonde hair or, you know, I definitely need lip fillers or I need this, you know, for men, it's like, I want to bulk up. Um, and so we think of change in terms of physical things, right? I want a new job. That'll make me happy. I want a new living space. I want a new partner. And what we don't necessarily look at is our internal self because our internal self really navigates our life. Um, it directs us towards happiness. If you don't know yourself, you don't know what makes you happy. And then you'll think all these external, physical, material things can create that happiness. So self-growth really starts from within and self-reflection is the key to self-growth. You have to be willing to spend time with yourself. You have to be willing to sit down and say, okay, these are the situations that happened today. What did I like? What didn't I like? Um, you know, I'm constantly fighting with my mom. Let's just say like, what's causing that? You know, what are her opinions? What are my opinions? Can we, can I come to a middle ground of understanding? Um, and that's really what allows us to grow is taking that time with ourselves. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. And um, how would you say, and, and, I, and it's a lot of it is being uncomfortable, right? Like being, having those uncomfortable conversations, even with yourself. So how would you say would be like sort of the basic, um, ABCs to start this sort of journey on um, on self growth. First, you need to have like the right mindset. So when I say mindset, I mean that you need to be willing to look at yourself honestly and genuinely and authentically. You have to be able to be in the mindset that I do want to change, that I, I want to become something better. I want to catapult my life into a different direction. And you have to be comfortable with change because change is so uncomfortable. That's definitely mm -hmm. true. Um, change is definitely uncomfortable. But if I think, as you said, like if you do want to take that, um, you want to head into that dire direction and catapult into that direction, that's definitely essential. Right. And then you have to see what kind of change do you, want. Do, you want, do you want external change? Do you want to get out of your living situation? Do you want a new job? Do you want to start a family? Um, or do you want internal change? You know, do you notice the way you behave with others is not, you know, what you hope to portray in the world? Do you, you know, wish to be more patient? Do you wish to be more kind? Do you want to be successful? Like, what are your innermost thoughts, you know, and what do you want to become? Um, and then from there, I would look at what's not working for you now. Why? The why, you know, and when people hear why, it automatically turns on defense mechanisms within us. Like, I don't know why. Like, I'm just like this. This is how I've become, like, over the years. Like, I don't have answers for you. So whenever I kind of pose that question to people, I always change the why into for what reason? For what reason do you behave like this? It automatically turns those defense mechanisms off 
because you have to think like, you know, your family or your friends, whatever, like, why do you do that? You have this, such a negative connotation with the word why, you know, that you're being attacked. So always ask yourself for what reason, you know, and sometimes it's, it's uncomfortable. The answers that you'll find with your defense mechanisms turned off, you're more willing to be honest, even with yourself and forget about others because before we can even project to others, we really need to just work within us. You won't be able to ask other people uncomfortable questions if you can't ask them to yourself because you'll always just repel from them because like we said, change is uncomfortable. Um, so understanding um, so your reason for change, change and then, making, change a and then making a smart goal. goal. And I'm sure you've all heard like about smart, goal, smart goals before, but if you haven't, they're specific, measurable, um, attainable, realistic, and time-oriented. And what this type of goal allows you to do is not not reach for a bar that's way too high because what we do in life is we we set our standards so high that we don't reach them and then when we fall we're like oh see I can't do it I knew that like I never make it I never you know get promoted but maybe you're purposely, purposely sabotaging, sabotaging yourself. yourself and so and making, so things, making more things more realistic more attainable more timely um you're able to make small goals. And then, you know, I'll get into compounding, how small things then can become large things because we have kind of gotten a grip and made it a foundational piece. And so now we can build upon that piece. Would you say that in creating a goal, would, um, would that ever be restricting? Like, would that make you a bit too laser focused or is it better to have that focus than to have a just a generic I just want to be better um, um I always think that it's better to have that focus right you want to be better what does that mean I want to be better great you know what is like what defines better for you everyone's better is different you know my better could be like I'm gonna smile at all the people at the grocery store today that makes me better you know but I need that that goal, like, okay, when I go to the grocery store, I'm going to smile at everybody, you know, is it realistic? Yes, I can smile. Is it attainable? Yeah, I know I can do it. Um, is it time oriented? Okay, yeah, I'm going to do it every time I go to the grocery store. And I'm going to see in a month, I'm going to check back in with myself and see, did that make me better? That, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Um, and then just while we're on this topic of making goals, um, I think that might be an additional um, helpful hit, uh, um, tip for everyone is we have actually had a question come in. What happens when someone important in our lives is resisting growth and is stuck in their way? So I would assume that that would have to do with um, open communication, but obviously I'll have you sort of professionally answer answer that when we have like, you know, I think we all have had an issue when we want to make a certain change or go in a certain direction. Someone that's either important in our lives that's not going anywhere, a loved one, can be some sort of, um, like, you know, a restrictive measure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really hard, right? Because everything is situational. So what the question is, um, I want to create change, but there's someone kind of restricting it. Is that correct? Um, so first of all, we have to acknowledge that we cannot change anybody else, right? So if somebody else is trying to restrict your change, we cannot like ask them to change that because that would require their own work, right? So what constraints can you do within your, your environment? You know, can you start a conversation that, look, I don't, you don't have to agree with what I'm doing, but I'm my own individual and I choose to move in this path. Can you at least accept it, right? Or looking at the situation, you know, if I get a little bit more information, I think I can answer it a little bit better because it, it is so situational. Yeah, so um, for the individual that wrote your, um, the, wrote the, the question, if you wanna, if you don't mind sharing some information or then, um, 
messaging us even later uh, if, if you want to be confidential and, and we can get back to you. But um, yeah, sort of um, feeding off of what Sakina says, um, I agree that it's it's a going back to like the communication aspect, right, and facilitating that conversation. And whoever is in your life, if they're not going anywhere, it would be from you know my unprofessional standpoint. I would say that it's um, it's worth to communicate that the way you are right now may, is making you not your optimal self and you you are unhappy this way and so this change is gonna um, catapult you into a happier state of mind and therefore even have a better relationship with said person so um, I would say that's like a basic piggybacking a little bit off of what you said change is inevitable right I'm gonna change you're gonna change we're gonna get older we um, go through different life, life circumstances, which make us different. And so, you know, explaining that to that person as well, because I think that because some people are so resistant to change, they're unaware that like change is inevitable. And then when they, you know, experience that change, whether it be with somebody else in their lives, they automatically go into panic mode because they don't know what to do because they were so closed off to change. And so it is a long journey because if you're dealing with someone who's not comfortable with change, again, it's an uncomfortable thing, right? So to become comfortable with it is so difficult and it really breaks a lot of molds that we were told to, you know, kind of sit in. Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, and then sort of going off of that changes, right? So how... How do we navigate? So now we've, we've sort of reflected, we've made a goal, um, we've seen what's working, what's not working, and the kind of laser focus, the direction that we want to go in. So now how do we go about making those changes? Because it can be quite overwhelming sometimes. So, so we, start with, we start with small change, small changes, right? Um, like I said, smiling at the grocery store. It seems so silly. It seems like what a dumb task, but it will make a difference, you know? And so you start with small changes, you know, define your goal. Okay, what small change can you make towards it? I recently myself, you know, found that I wasn't working out as much. I have kids, I have a family, I have obligations, I have work, and what falls off first is me. And so I realized that, you know, it's something that I used to love in my, like, young adult life and like as I'm getting older I just let it go but I don't enjoy it as much it is hard when you're out of shape it's really hard to work out so I started with twice a week I started with twice a week for like a month or two and I, I'm like okay now I'm comfortable with working out twice a week I can increase it to maybe three times so now I'm going three times I do yoga once I work out twice um, and then I'm like, okay, I see small changes and that motivates me. So what's my next step? Okay. I'm looking at my eating habits. So after I had kids, I have like this huge sweet tooth that I never had. And I am finding myself around cupcakes and donuts and everything super delicious all the time. And I have to say, okay, what do I want more? Do I want like a more healthy lifestyle? Or do I want these donuts and these cakes? And you know what? Sometimes the answer is like, I want cake and that's okay. But just being mindful of it, right? Being mindful of the fact like, oh, I ate cake three days in a row. Do I need it that fourth day? Or maybe I should look into alternatives. So I found like those Chobani like flip cups. They have like chocolate and <laughs> yogurt. I love it. It's a really small change, change such as such a huge difference. difference. Um, and then um, small and change small becomes, becomes a change. Like, change. like, like, in, like my example, in my example, I started, I started with two days a week, it became three. It became, okay, now maybe I should change my lifestyle and not eat cake anymore, you know? But because you see that you can do it, then you want to do more. But if you set yourself up for that failure and that like, you know, kind of reach for the ceiling, reach for the star goal, when you see yourself fall, it's, it's a disappointment, right? And then you 
when you say to yourself, like you're disappointing, it impacts you. And then it makes you not want change because you're like, I can't do it. For sure. And I think that the beautiful thing of um, small changes is that when you do something positive, it, it, the reward and the positive feeling that you feel in yourself is tenfold. Like, like you said, the smiling at the grocery store, it's such a small, small, silly sounding thing, but it would impact your day and make you feel so much better for so much longer than that two second smile took, you know? Yeah, yeah. and like going into going that, into that subconsciously, subconsciously, we cannot, we tell, cannot between tell between the real, the real and fake. And, fake. Um, and um, so when and so we talk to ourselves, ourselves with, negative with negative words, words that's what that's our, what our um, subconscious, subconscious picks up. Picks up. So like, so like another, another thing that's thing really that great is affirmation. affirmation. I tell this to my clients all the time. time. You know, you say, know, say nice, things, nice to things to yourself. I am strong, I'm strong, strong I am beautiful, I am capable. Anything I put my mind to, I conquer things like that instead of like, I don't want to fail because what your mind focuses on is failure. Your subconscious takes that word failure and it becomes, I am a failure, not I am successful. And so eliminating just negative words makes such a difference because our neural pathways are set the way they are. And so we run through the same thought processes often until we make that change and make that change so significant that a new neuro pathway is formed, we won't see that change. And so it sounds silly. I hear it all the time. Are you kidding me? Do you want me to 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 just tell myself I'm beautiful and I'm going to become beautiful? Yes. That is what I'm telling you. You will be able able to to look at yourself yourself in such a different different light light if you're kinder kinder to yourself. When others are are kind to us, don't we we gravitate gravitate towards towards them? them, Don't we want to be around them? In the same way, you know, you'll think better of yourself once you can be kind to yourself. That's amazing. I love that. And I think that even just going back to self-care, right? I mean, just the affirmations itself, it seems, again, so simple, but it really does make a difference. And even from personal experience, it's like, yeah, okay, I can say three sentences to myself, like twice a day, fine. But you just do it because you think it's the right thing to do. But when you actually um, live the benefits of it and you see that your like brain is literally being rewired to a more positive um, mindset, essentially, it really, like, it's rewarding. And, and you see that it, it works 100%. And if you want to kind of enhance it, do it in the mirror. Like, I like, dare do everybody to watch right now. Do it in the mirror. Look, look at yourself. Look at yourself in the eye. Don't check your hair. Don't like look at your shirt to see it. Look at yourself in the eye. Say, say, I I am I love myself. I am so capable. I am everything I wanted more. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know the mirror trick. We'll definitely try that. Um, and then would you see sort um, you said like a lot of the self care um, like just from your personal experience was something that sort of you know um, slipped out and, and you had to sort of remember to implement back in but would you say that, that even in terms of helping and maintaining um, your self growth and your goals like would you say that that's an important aspect too of course, of course. Um, so, um, self- so self growth in my goals um, so like and a prime example is just, you know, getting the guts to, to come on social media and share my knowledge and like my beliefs and, you know, where this path has taken me to help others. It's uncomfortable, you know, but I had small goals. Like last year, I think I did. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make an Instagram account. Like, I wonder if anybody's going to follow me. I wonder if like, I'll have anything to give in terms of, you know, knowledge or support or, you know, anything actually you know and then from there I grew upon that and grew upon that and you know I'm here today with you you know you reached out and you said hey let's do this and it was a push for me it's nerve-wracking but it's something that I want to do you know and had I not done those small things before I wouldn't have been ready to say yes to you 
It's like that. It's evidently gradual changes that come together. Yeah. Nothing, nothing happens nothing overnight. Happens overnight, and I think that we hear that all the time, but we don't necessarily believe it because we don't understand someone's journey. You know, do we sit and do we ask the right questions? Do we um, take that time to acknowledge other people's viewpoints, perspectives, and the things that they've gone through? You know, um, we judge a lot. You know, I've seen it in myself. I've seen it along my growth. Um, you know, as an adolescent, like I was submerged into this like artificial world. You know, where like you want, I wanted to, I wanted to look good. I wanted to be presented a certain way, and you know, if I wasn't presented in that light, it wasn't okay. Um, and so I myself had to, you know, work through that and learn to be okay with myself. And this is who I am. And if you don't like it, that's okay, because we're not going to all get along all the time. You know, we have conflicts with our partners, we have conflicts with our children, we have conflicts with our parents, we have conflicts with every person that we encounter. We are bound to not get along with everything. And so I think accepting that allows you to accept yourself. Because if somebody doesn't like you, it doesn't break you down then. So in the past, like, if somebody didn't like me, I'd feel really bad. You know, what did I do to them? Um, I'd really tear myself down. But acknowledging that I don't have to get along with everybody. And not everyone has to get along with me. And we can still be cordial and we don't have to be mean to each other. Acceptance, that's so powerful. Finding that understanding and compassion is so powerful. Um, and I believe that everybody can get there, but it is investing a lot of time in yourself, you know, sitting with yourself, doing those uncomfortable things, like talking to yourself in the mirror. Can you like admit to people that you do that? Like, it's hard to say, yeah, you know, I wake up and part of my routine is like, I tell myself, I love myself and I'm beautiful. People think you're cocky. People think like, Oh, who the hell are you? You know, you're so weird. You do that. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's it's that confidence with yourself and then that confidence then to, to own it and to share your journey with others, right? Like, it's it's you, you get comfortable with being comfortable. People get confused with that a lot. There's a difference between being cocky and being confident in yourself. You know, the cockiness is coming from a place that of unacceptance, of wanting to be better. Um, and the confidence is just, this is who I am and I love myself. And if you don't, that's okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be broken over it. You know, where that cockiness is, I am broken over it. And now I'm going to do something else to enhance myself, to show you that I'm better. And so you're always fighting this battle when you're cocky or when you're confident. It's just cool. You know, see you later. Easy breezy. <laughs> yeah. And then what would you say, just um, just the thought that came to mind, when you're working on all of this, right, and it is uncomfortable, um, and it is a constant sort of, like, even though it is small changes, it's constant work. Um, mm -hmm. And how would you say that you could deal with, um, I don't know, like w when it feels a little overwhelming, even though you are taking it gradually, like what's a good, um, you know, way to just, you know, step back and take a minute? Um, so I think self-reflection is like the best thing, you know, when you need to stop and take a minute. Um, change is overwhelming. And sometimes you feel like it might be going too fast. Sometimes you might, you know, hit a roadblock and said, okay, I've I've accomplished this. Is there anything more to accomplish? And so self-reflect, think of, you know, the things that you go through. Like I always tell my clients, why do you come to a therapist? Because a therapist asks you questions that you would never ask yourself. I will ask you the most uncomfortable question that you would never even dream of. And I love it. I absolutely love it because I get to help you tap into answering these things. You know, I get to help you think in a new way and it's just beautiful. Um, but you can do that at home. You know, you can be your own therapist, you know, in a sense, if you're willing to take yourself in that direction. And 
you know, be brutally honest with yourself. Don't make excuses. Self-reflect. Take 20 minutes out of your day. Journal. Reflect on your day, your relationships. If something in particular is bothering you, a situation, write about it. Because when you write, you automatically allow your, your truth to be heard. And you'll be able to see things in a different perspective. And with it all on paper, you can make connections that you wouldn't be able to do when you're just thinking. Because sometimes our thoughts become racing thoughts. And we become unproductive in that situation. Yeah, it's so true. Um, it, it's funny how everything really goes down to reflection at the end of the day. It's like whether you want to create that change or you want to piece out the change or you want to figure out what needs to be changed. Like you don't, you feel like there's something, but you don't know what. It just comes down to like taking a minute, you know, um, reflecting and however you do that, right? Whether it's like lying down on the floor or it's meditating and just listening to the noise in your life and um, decluttering that, right? And I think that from a self-care perspective that, and I know, I know you've shared this in some of your other talks that just, you know, meditating, sleeping, and just like that self-care part is just, it's, 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 um, it's comforting, right? It's, it, it helps you through your, your self-growth. Right. And I think, you know, especially, especially in today's society, we think we have to be productive all the time. Like if you're not doing something, then you're not doing something right. Um, and I think we've kind of pushed, you know, our self-care on the side. But, you know, working long hours, being on the go constantly, having your kids in every single activity, shuffling them from here to there, you know, it takes a toll on us. And, and, and it's okay, okay to, to ask for help sometimes and say, you know what, I am going to work on myself. And I know that my body and my mind need some peace and some, like, just quiet time. And that's okay. What did you do today? I literally did nothing and I sat in my pajamas and I thought of different ways, like I want my life to go. In. You know, we see this one track and we just stay on it because we don't have the time or the capacity to think of other ways we could be going, you know? And had I myself not thought that my life can be different, my life can go in a different direction, I wouldn't be here. You know, but I was forced to because of circumstances. And sometimes, you know, that's the only way that we catapult change. So when you're in that really tough situation, I dare you to look at yourself and say, what is this situation allowing me to see? Because the struggle is where the growth happens. If you're struggling with something, that means it needs to change and that means you need to grow. And would you say that sort of looking back and, you know, coming back to journaling, writing down and maybe finding a pattern of things that maybe bother you or annoy you, things that you want to, you know, target changes to because it's just um, always an issue in, in simple words in your life? Um, like, if, if you can tell us, like, more from a therapeutic standpoint, um, what sort of like noticing patterns or anything that's happened in the past as as a method of pinpointing maybe what your struggles are and maybe why they're, they're annoying to you. Okay, so um, let me think about that a little bit. So I have a client. Um, he's experienced grief. His father recently passed away and him and his mom are having conflict. And so he's started to lie to his mom you know, about silly little things. Like his mom calls him from work, you know, now that her husband has passed, she has to work full time. She has two little kids because of Corona. They're at home. Now she's at work and she called him and she's just like, you know, make sure you eat an apple. Um, I'm coming home at this time, cut it for you and your sister. And she goes home and she confronts him and he says, I ate the apple. And so did Sarah, you know, the sister. And she looks in the fridge and she's like, I went to the grocery store and I bought three apples and there's still three apples. You're lying. And, you know, obviously he's like, you know, just fuming because he got caught. So I see them. They both come in the office. The mom texts me like, hey, I'm having issues. Um, 
can we come in? I see them and, you know, their lives have obviously changed. Everybody's under pressure. And he, you know, admitted to his mom, like, listen, you get really mad at me. And she's like, I get mad because of X, Y, and Z, and you're not listening. And we, you know, kind of the mom understood that, okay, she's getting upset with so many different things because, you know, he's just not listening and they, they're unable to have productive conversations at home that now, yeah, for every little thing. Yeah. I, if he told me he didn't eat the apple, I would have gotten mad. You know, that's so hard for a mom to admit, but okay, they're coming and they're getting help. And we're like, you know, kind of rectifying the situation and helping him understand how, you know, some things are part of life, you know, chores are part of life, you know, learning to do certain things are part of your growth process um, through adolescence into young adulthood and, you know, thereafter. But if you didn't get help for that, right? And so I know a lot of like situations, even myself, you know, I feel like sometimes my parents would get mad over small things and it can really turn into a problem where you're lying about small things, you know, with other people in your life like your roommate asks oh did you lock the door you're like yeah I locked the door just because you don't want to get in trouble that you didn't lock the door or admit that you were like forgetful um and so just how compounding works with our goals that we create small goals and then bigger goals to achieve big things it happens with our negative attributes they start off small it starts off with like yeah I ate the apple then it's like, yeah, I did my homework. Yeah, I took the test. You know, yeah, I did this. And and I really didn't do any of it. You it know? becomes a habit. It becomes a, a habit. habit. And what we don't realize is it, it becomes a habit because of some fear that we had when we were, you know, seven years old and our mom wants us to eat an apple. And so that's where therapy helps. And that's where that self-reflecting and... Um, thinking helps, right? Like, okay, what in my past caused me to be a pathological liar? You know, someone who just lies over little things. What in my past caused me to worry about the way I look all the time? What in my past has caused me to get really defensive if somebody tells me I'm wrong? Um, and and so, so there are so many different ways to look at things, but you know, really our childhood years, like one to seven, create such a foundation for our minds that we're so unaware of, you know, and, and accepting that and understanding that. And, you know, maybe even if you're stuck and you're like, I don't know where to start on this self-growth journey. Think of, you know, what happened to me when I was five years old? You know, can I remember any negative experiences, you know? Maybe there was a lot of yelling in your household. And so now you're very sensitive to yelling. And now, you know, someone yells at you and you just can't even handle it. You can't even address the situation. You'll cry. You'll make a big deal. You'll leave. Um, and, you know, understanding that, okay, well, you know, it would stress me out when I was young. You know, a five-year-old can't handle that kind of stress in a home. And so you took it with you into your current place and okay, maybe your partner or whoever you're with is not even yelling. They're just raising their voice, but you're so sensitive to it. And so by you understanding that, listen, I grew up in this situation where it was traumatic, you know, as adults, sometimes we don't know how children are impacted by our actions, but, you know, yelling in a household is so traumatic for a child. But if you as an individual can understand that, then you can go to the people in your life and say, listen, I'm going to try working on it. I understand that, you know, this is the way you speak or, you know, you grew up in a very loud household where you weren't heard. So you project your voice and it seems aggressive, you know, and working through those situations will only happen when you can understand, you know, what makes me do those things? What's the reason behind them? Yeah, you're right. And it's sometimes it's such a small thing. Like, even if it's a negative situation, it's not necessarily someone's fault or like you're not trying to be angry, at, say your parents or anyone, but it, it did affect the way you deal with situations now. It's um, 
it's great to take note of it and to recognize it so you can sort of process and declutter it and, and navigate your future self-growth based on that recognition. And it just allows you to open up conversations with the people that you love. If you look at your if you look at your life and you see a common like pattern, like I have clients who come in like, I just can't find anybody, but okay, look at what you're looking for. You're always looking for this thing that is unattainable. Or you always choose someone who treats you badly. Why is that? What's going on there? Let's dig deeper, right? And ultimately, you know, sometimes we uncover, I feel unworthy. I wasn't accepted as a child. You know, I try to be accepted by this type of person and I never am. Um, and we look for things that are trying to teach us time and time again. And those things will come into our life until we've learned the lesson. So true. Um, and then what would you say? Um, I guess, I mean, we've kind of tapped on this a little bit in this conversation, but sort of what... Um, what are things that you would sort of say to yourself in, in terms of learning to not sort of speak based on like, you know, we we're talking a little bit about past traumas and whatnot, um, or, you know, just negative situations that have happened to us and have created like a pattern of a reaction to a similar situation. So how could we navigate sort of learning, and, and this I think has to do with just generic self-growth, learning to speak with your like heart and mind versus a bias based on a previous situation. So I think, so I right. think right. Like first, as we went through the steps, like understanding that there is something there and then just, you know, taking a step. If you enter a situation that, you know, you feel like, okay, I'm getting triggered. Take a deep breath. Because a deep breath will connect your mind and your body. And so what I say is like two in and two out. Maybe do that three to four times. You know, get present in the situation because your mind is going all over the place. It's, you know, remembering that hurt and that pain. And, you know, we don't see our minds doing that. But ultimately, that's what's happening in the background. You know, and you can feel like, okay, my palms are getting sweaty. I'm like giving off heat. Like this is uncomfortable for me. And once you do the breathing, hopefully you can, you know, connect your mind and your body and say, okay, I'm getting triggered because of a past situation. What do I need to do? Right. I need to either say, you know what? I can't talk about this right now. Do you mind if we continue this conversation later? Um, you can step away. You can say, you know what, I'm going to try now that I've acknowledged this, I'm going to try to continue the conversation. You know, let's see how far I can get before I snap, you know, <laughs> testing yourself a little bit and like allowing those little like that little change, you know, maybe the first couple times you're like, I need to walk away and then you become comfortable with that idea. Then you, you know, get involved with a little bit, you're able to not, you know, get flooded. And when we get flooded, we can't have a conversation, we can't intake any information, we can't do anything. You know, we are just, our body is just going through motions that we don't even have, like, the capacity to control or understand. And so just regulating your body to the point where, like, oh, like, okay, I'm not getting hot anymore, you know, when people talk about controversial things. And generally, that's what triggers us, right, is controversial things. And I think, um, a, a, like, important sort of thought I'm having and just something to take note is that, like, it's, emotions are not bad. It's not that we're trying to suppress them. It's just that we're trying to pace out how we react to someone. And I think that even on the flip side of the conversation, if we are the ones that are in a conversation with someone that's trying to take a minute to breathe, we have to be better listeners and not, like, press someone for an answer and, like, when you're on the phone with someone or you're talking to someone face to face and they take like 10 seconds before they answer your question, like that, I feel like that has to be normalized a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Like, like understanding, understanding cues, right? Like conversational communication cues, right? Facial expressions. If you see someone is uncomfortable, ask them, like, is this making you uncomfortable? Um, like you said, you have to pick up on these cues and, 
you have to be aware of them yourself, you know, and that's where that, that like self growth aspect works. If you're one of those people who like are only focused on yourself and not, you know, paying attention to the person in front of you, then maybe that's what you need to start working on, right? Becoming a better um, communicator. Yes, agreed. Um, and then sort of to wrap it up, um, I would say the last thing that we can chat about is the difference between like, okay, so we're, we talked about like how to, you know, navigate self growth, what steps to take. Um, and then in that, in that improvement time, what we can do to um, pace ourselves. And then when we come back and, you know, from working to ourselves, and we start with our like new and improved self interacting with everyone how do we um i feel like there's always a difference between accepting someone tolerating someone but then also understanding and forgiving someone so if you can tap into the, the difference between the three and, and navigating each three of them sure so so acceptance acceptance is understanding right if you can understand someone then you can accept them um if you can understand what causes them to believe the things that they believe or, you know, the values that they have, it'll allow you to accept them. Um, I give the example of parents a lot because parents are people, you know, in our lives that are constantly there. They love us. We love them unconditionally, but we don't always have the same views, you know, as a younger generation, we are pushing their values um, and their beliefs and challenging them. Right. And so we're not always going to see eye to eye, but we accept that, you know, to a certain extent. Um, or I accept that, uh, that, you know, I always, I try to, one thing that I'm trying to change is, you know, talking in I statements, you know, not pushing my beliefs on somebody else. So I, I really think that, you know, my own parents, they, can understand some things and then they can't understand some things and I'm like accepting of it. Um, tolerating someone is when we just put up with somebody because we have to. Right. And sometimes we tolerate people because they're not that important in our lives, but you know, they just happen to be around. Um, and so that's one thing, but if you want to move past that and you don't want to just tolerate someone because you're like around them a lot, you have to be willing to have that un un uncomfortable conversation and say, I don't like it when you do this, this, and this, you know, it makes me uncomfortable, you know, when you say things like that, um, you know, cause only through conversation can we grow to understand another person, right. And understand ourselves. Like why do the things that they do bother me so much? Right? They're not imposing anything on me by having thoughts, right? And so the thing is, their thoughts probably can have a conflict with your values and your beliefs, and that's why things are coming up, you know? And so, again, it's another opportunity to reflect and see, okay, what can I change or what can I understand better? Um, and then forgiveness. Um, forgiveness is a tough one. You know, we can say, like, I forgive you, but do you really? Or do you just say that, you know, to hope that, like, a situation will just, you'll make peace with the situation? The forgiveness is a deeper level, um, and it takes a lot of work, um, especially in, like, a trauma situation. Um, I can accept some things, but I ne can't necessarily forgive some things. Right. But ultimately, forgiveness is what sets us free. And I truly do believe that. So if you're willing to do the work, then you'll get to that space. And from there, you'll know that it's not you'll feel that it's not holding you back anymore. And you'll see yourself change in, you know, different interactions and different circumstances that you're put in. You know, once that forgiveness has um, really, truly um, been put out there. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, so that pretty much concludes our first episode. Um, I hope that anyone that was listening had any questions. Um, we did adjust those. I didn't see any other new ones come in.
Um, but yeah, so we'll be back here in two weeks and we'll share, um, this will be saved on YouTube so you can definitely come back and reference it and share it. And um, yeah, other than that, we'll advertise like what the timings and the dates for our next one is. But this was so great. Thank you, Sakina. Thanks, Carol. I really appreciate you taking the time, time and setting this whole thing up. Um, looking forward to our next session next session again. Session again. Yes, me too. Yeah. Perfect. And then I'll, if anyone has any follow-up questions, I'll answer them. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank